Antenna tuners have sparked many a debate amongst hams for decades. There is also a lot of myths surrounding these clever devices. In this episode, we'll look at a few of these myths. Welcome to the House of Ham. This is Bob WV7W. And today I want to go over some antenna tuner myths. The first is antenna tuners tune the antenna. This first myth is actually known by a lot of hams, so it won't come as a shock to many of you, and that is antenna tuners, as the name suggests, actually tune the antenna. Well, this is mostly false. The only way to tune an antenna is to physically change its dimensions, configuration, or location. Yes, that's right. All of those things can impact the tune of your antenna, or more correctly, the impedance at a given frequency. But is that the whole story? No. As it turns out, it is more nuanced than you may think. Now let's look at a dipole for 20 meters as our example. Now a flat top center fed dipole in free space has a feed point impedance of about 73 ohms. Now let's get real here. Nobody has an antenna in free space. We live in the real world. So things like how high off the ground, your supporting structures, and other things near the antenna can also impact the impedance. The configuration can impact this too. If you have an inverted V, it will have a different impedance than that of a flat top dipole. For the sake of discussion, if your legs slope down so there is a 90 degree angle between them, the feed point impedance drops to about 40 ohms. Lowering an antenna from halfway above the ground also lowers the impedance. So all of this stuff can change the characteristic impedance of your actual antenna. So with that in mind, what does an antenna tuner actually do? Well, an antenna tuner, or more appropriately, a matching unit, can provide a conjugate match of your antenna system. This not only gives an impedance of 50 ohms to your transceiver, it also tunes the antenna system into resonance. You heard that right, it tunes the antenna system. Now the antenna system includes your antenna, your feed line, the ground, etc. So some may say that since the antenna is a big part of the system, it does tune the antenna. Well, there is no point in arguing with those that strongly believe this. At the end of the day, it just doesn't matter. This leads us to the next myth and that is antenna tuners only make a radio happy. I would say a majority of hams think this is true. Now, as I said a minute ago, a tuner provides a conjugate match of the antenna system. This means if your antenna is too long or has some inductive reactance, the antenna tuner can provide a conjugate match to zero out that inductive reactance by adding an equal amount of capacitive reactance, thus making the system resonant. This means the maximum power is radiated out of the antenna. Now what the antenna tuner doesn't do is get rid of the SWR between the tuner and the antenna. But the only downside to this is the loss in the coax will slightly decrease your radiated power. Not only are you losing some of the forward power, but you're also losing some of the reflected power along the coax. But this really isn't as bad as it sounds the actual amount of loss is minimal. To better illustrate this, let's go to an SWR loss calculator. Now I like this one by KV5R, but there are lots of them out there. Just Google SWR loss calculator. Now let's use some Belden RG8X coax at say 100 feet on 20 meters with a three to one SWR and 100 watts out. Sounds like a pretty standard thing, doesn't it? So, when we calculate this, we get a matched loss of 1.08 dB. Now, matched loss is the loss in the cable without any SWR. Next is the SWR loss. And we only get about 0.53 dB of SWR loss. That is less than half of the loss from the cable with a perfect match. Now, practically speaking, that 1.61 dB of loss is less than one quarter of an S unit. And I doubt there are too many operators out there that will hear a difference that small. Speaking of loss, here is the next myth. Antenna tuners have too much loss and should be avoided. 
This one runs rampant on the internet in forums and on YouTube. Even the cheapest tuners out there typically have better than a 90% efficiency. But don't take my word for it. I want to reference a video done by Crazy Checkoff where he did some relative field strength measurements comparing an antenna adjusted from a 1.3 to 1 SWR all the way up to an 11 to 1 SWR and compared them with and without a tuner. The results are quite amazing. And I think this clearly demonstrates that the losses in an antenna tuner are far outweighed by the results. Now, I wouldn't call this a laboratory grade test, but it's good enough to be compelling and I think tells a great story. I highly recommend you go check out his video, which is linked in the description. Now, while I'm on the subject of referencing, I also want to give a huge shout out to Mark, the ham Florida man, who has some outstanding videos that go way more in depth than I did. And I use some of his knowledge in this video. Now, he has a very informative and somewhat snarky approach that I find useful and very entertaining. And I've linked Mark's channel below for you to go check out for yourself. Now, Mark references Walt Maxwell W2DU, who is unfortunately a silent key. Walt's work in the antenna field is unparalleled, and I recommend that you check out some of his articles or his book, Reflections. Other great sources are the ARRL Antenna Book, as there is a plethora of great information in there as well. The point to this, as well as my other myth videos, is that there's a lot of crap and misinformation out there on the web and on YouTube. So don't blindly follow the guidance of any one guy, including this one. Dig a bit deeper and research it for yourself. You will find a little bit of research from trusted sources like the ARL Antenna Book will help you ferret out the crap and also learn a lot along the way and become a better ham. Until next time, this is WB7W73.